Hi, everyone. I'm Bruce Carlson of the ARP Washington State Office in Seattle, and it's Fraud Watch Friday. And we've got our fraud prevention video of the week coming up. And to help me, I've got a couple of our great volunteers, Kay Tomlinson and Lee Wiseman. And they are joining me. Um, Lee is in Sammamish. Kay is in Lake Taps. I'm in Snoqualmie. Ordinarily, we would do this kind of education in person. But uh, due to current conditions, we are bringing you this information from home. So um, we are going to talk today about how people are victimized by fraud, why it happens to people. It's, it's just amazing. Um, as of November, Lee sent me this um, info that 257,000 people have reported being defrauded to the FTC so far this year. So it's just rampant and going into the holiday season. We have a whole bunch of holiday scams, charity scams, and, and, and people fall for them. One question that is often asked is why does that happen? So Lee, can you help us understand how people fall victims to these kinds of frauds? Yes, I'll be happy to tell you about that because I think it's very important that we all know. First of all, a con artist can be a man or a woman, and they will prey on your emotions in order to get into your pocketbook. It's uh, Many of us think, well, we're too smart to be taken in. I, I know all about those things. Well, the truth of the matter is, it is not a matter of intelligence. It is not a matter of education. What it really is, is a matter of emotions because the scam artist really wants to get you under the ether. Now, ether is an anesthetic that used to be used very commonly to put a patient just enough out of it to respond to a doctor if he said, raise your hand or turn your head, but not to think about anything else. So that's why the scam artists call it getting you under the ether. They want to trigger your emotions and get you into a heightened emotional state. And they want to get you to do what they want you to do without thinking about it. And they do that by frightening the victim, offering some kind of unexpected wealth or riches, or tugging at your heartstrings. Now, there are ways, next screen please, there are calls that you may have gotten on the phone or you may have heard friends have gotten these calls and it may be from a governmental agency such as social security and they may try to weasel information out of you by saying they've got your name but they'll say i need you to verify your social security number that is that is not the appropriate information to give anybody that you don't know for sure is the person that is asking for it. They may call and threaten and say, if you don't buy this product or sign up for this service, you're going to lose your social security benefits. If you get any calls from any of those governmental agencies um, and from anybody that you think might be legitimate, a bank, utility company, never click on the numbers when they say push one for more information. Never click on the number. If it comes as an email, never click on the box and don't respond to what they say before you have checked it out. One of the common things is, and, and I've heard a lot of that recently, uh, is your utility company has called and said, your bill hasn't been paid and we're going to turn off your electricity in 30 minutes if you don't follow these instructions. The instructions then tell you to go out and buy a prepaid credit card and then call this number when you get them. Then they will say, read me the numbers back. And when you have done that, the money has gone to the caller and it is gone. So we want you to be very wary of that. Next screen, please. We also want you to be wary of the voices that people use because they, they talk in a very stern cross fashion. Do what I say right away. 
or I've also gotten calls that that are trying to get me excited that say, thank you for choosing Marriott. Those calls aren't coming from Marriott. So if you get calls of any sorts from any of these people that are threatening, check them out first. Now, another scam is a call that you get either from someone who says, Grandma, this is your grandson and I'm in trouble. I need money. Or it may be somebody who's calling and saying, I'm calling because your grandson is in trouble and he needs money. He's had an accident and he needs the money, whatever the story is. Please, even though they plead with you to keep it a secret, call the family member, call that person and verify it. That is a scam that tugs at your heartstrings and Kay will talk more about that in a little bit. So next screen, please. Another way that the scam artist operates is unexpected riches. You just won a lottery. Did you actually uh, buy a ticket? How can you win it if you didn't? And if they tell you that you've won this wonderful lottery of a lot of money, if you talk to them long enough, they will then come back and say, well, before we can send you the, the money, we have to ask for this administration fee or transportation fee. And if you send them that, then they'll call you back and say, oh, gee, I forgot that uh, there's also this um, special and it's some other bogus fee. And the point is they keep asking for more and more money and you didn't really win the lottery. So check that out. And kind of related to that with, with uh, unexpected riches is here's a deal that you can't pass up. Here's a product that's really worth a thousand dollars, but we're going to sell it to you for 250 if, and the chances are they want you to wire money and they want you to wire it right away. Or in order to entice you, um, you've got to act fast. We only have three of these left and you don't want to miss out. And the third thing, and it may even overlay all of this, is I'm an expert in this field. And I'm telling you, if you don't take advantage of this right now, you're being very foolish. So please don't get sucked into any of these things and be aware that they are definitely scams. Now, another item, another way that um, you need to be aware of, or other thing I should say that you should be aware of, is a red flag. And I'm hoping that a red flag will light up in your, in your head, in your ears, in the in a little voice in the back of your, your head that says, this is dangerous. This is not legitimate. So if you are asked for personal information of any kind and don't let them wheedle it out of you by saying, oh, by the way, wh where exactly do you live? Where exactly do you bank? Any of these things sound friendly, but they're really not. And if you're asked to respond right away, usually if there's an emergency that they create and you've got to act right away or miss out on it, it's really not legitimate. And in, in most cases, that is a warning that you are dealing with a fraudster. And last but not least, please be aware if you are asked to pay for a service by gift cards or prepaid credit cards, Bitcoin, which is becoming popular, or by wiring money. You need to know and understand that the large majority of money wires that go through are, are fraudulent. They are not legitimate. So you need to be very careful about that. And legitimate companies don't do business with gift cards or prepaid credit cards. So all of that, please listen to the little voice in the back of your head and don't be taken in. Now, Kay, I'm gonna ask you to get into the, the pieces that deal with the real emotions. Thanks, Lee. Yes, there is another way that scammers will approach you to try to take your money and your personal information. It's called grooming. 
The scammers create actually a victim profile by asking a series of questions because they want to create a personal connection with you, their targeted victim. So a groomer will typically call, text, email the victim every day and befriend them. And usually they're going to share fake details about their own life, which will usually mimic the victim's circumstances, their beliefs, and the things that they like. So this not only fosters trust between the victim and the perpetrator, but it makes it very difficult for the victim to report a crime once they start to suspect that something is not quite right. So why would that be difficult? Well, it's because the victim feels guilty or embarrassed and maybe even ashamed. What if my friends and family find out that I've been taken in by a scam? Will my adult children think that I can no longer handle my own affairs if they find out about this? But before we start blaming victims about being gullible, let me explain a little bit how this building trust process might work. What people don't realize is that the scammers have evolved. They use sophisticated psychological tools. And once a relationship is developed through grooming, the con men use a very common psychological tool. It's called reciprocity. Somebody does something nice for you, like a free lunch, or maybe gifts, or maybe even calls you. And uh, so you feel less lonely, and then you feel an obligation to reciprocate. So think about it for a minute. As children, we're brought up to share, to be nice, and to return favors. So if a stranger asks us out of the blue to give them money, it's usually easy to say no. But if a friend asks us, especially if they've been nice to us in the past or done favors for us, we feel obligated to reciprocate. So. When the scammer then asks you for money, they're asking as a friend, not a stranger, because they have built this trust with you. Reciprocity is a well-known and common, powerful tool that scammers use for fraud. So what are some of the warning signs that you're being groomed? Well, if you're approached by a stranger by phone or text, or social media websites, and they start asking seemingly innocent questions during what they want you to believe is of just a casual conversation. Or you've met someone online, and they tell you they have strong feelings for you, even love. But it's very early in the relationship, and you've never met them in person, or even on FaceTime or Zoom. You are being groomed for a romance scam. Or if the groomer claims to be in the same situation that you are or share a common interests, oh my gosh, I can't believe I was so lucky to meet someone online that shares my passion for medieval architecture. How can you protect yourself from grooming? Well, we want you to consider and reconsider the personal information that you share on social media websites, including business networking websites. Scammers use this publicly available information every single day to identify and target potential victims for grooming. And never, never engage a stranger in a dialogue about your personal life, especially someone that you've never met in person. Keep this information to yourself. Don't forget the romance scam that I just mentioned. And don't accept social networking friend or follow requests from a stranger. You've probably heard this before, but think about it in terms of if someone knocked on your door that you didn't know, 
Would you open your door and just let them in? Probably not. So think about your social media presence as your online home and respond to strangers in the same way that you would if they came to your house. The best way to keep scammers out of your life is don't ever let them in when they knock. So we know that it's often difficult to detach yourself once you're involved in these trust building patterns. But if you suspect that you might be groomed, take action. By the same token, if you feel yourself getting excited about an offer that you've just been heard of, stop. Wait at least 24 hours and give yourself a chance to let the ether wear off. Talk to your friends and family. Don't be embarrassed, be empowered. Ask for help. Contact the police. Report to the Federal Trade Commission about your situation. That sound pretty daunting? Or maybe you're not sure that you're even really being scammed. Contact AARP's Fraud Fighter Call Center at 1-877-908-3360. And you can talk about your situation with a trained volunteer who can give you some advice about reporting, how to protect yourself, and how to protect your friends and your family. And of course, don't forget to contact and connect with our Washington State AARP office. Like our Facebook page, and you'll be able to get Fraud Watch Network updates, including videos and warnings about the latest scams. Follow us on Twitter as well as Instagram. And if you're part of an organization that would like to have someone come and speak with your group about fraud or cybercrime, contact AARP Washington Speakers Bureau, and we're happy to provide that for your organization. Bruce? Well, thank you very much, Lee and Kay. Very interesting info. I, I always learn something. And, um, one, 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 one thing I would say about our Speakers Bureau that you had just mentioned is the speakers are people like like yourselves, right? We have a, a group of speakers um, who will speak to you online and in a format kind of like this, but it can be customized to your group and we can present that over Zoom or, or other online platforms. Um, and that's something that you guys enjoy doing, right? Absolutely. Very much so. Absolutely. I mean, all, all of our, our volunteers and, and Lee and Kay are, are, are only two. Um, and there, there, are, and there are others who have um, expertise in cybercrime and, and in other areas. So um, as, as we mentioned, if, if you'd like to send an email to aarpwa at aarp.org, you can get more information um, on that. And if you'd like more information on fraud in general from AARP, you can reach us at the aarp.org slash fraudwatch network website. That's uh, aarp.org slash fraudwatch network, all one word. And we've got a ton of information there. So Lee, Kay, thank you very much for, for joining me and doing this and providing the expertise. Um, I, as I say, this is a very well informed group on fraud and a great asset for, for all of us. So if you have any questions, if, if there are topics that you would like us to cover in future episodes, you can reach us at, at the email I mentioned, arpwa uh, at arp.org, or you can leave it in the comments and we'll check it out and get back to you or put it on the calendar for the future. So for Lee, for Kay, and for me, thank you very much for watching today. And uh, stay safe and stay clear of fraud, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.